Hello students, today let us discuss about the organs of the immune system. Introduction The immune system of our body consists of complex network of morphologically and functionally diverse organs and tissues called lymphoid organs. The lymphoid organs are functionally classified into groups primary and secondary lymphoid organs, and tertiary lymphoid organs. They provide the sites for the growth, development, and maturation of lymphocytes. They are joined together by blood vessels and lymphatic system of the body into a functional whole during an immune response against antigen by carrying the lymphocytes to and fro in different areas of the body. Primary lymphoid organs. The primary lymphoid organs provide microenvironments for the development and maturation of the lymphocytes. Thymus and the bone marrow are the primary or central lymphoid organs. Immature lymphocytes mature and become an immunocompetent cells capable of mounting an immune response in the primary lymphoid organs. Bone marrow. Bone marrow is the site of B cell origin and development in most mammals, including humans and mice, but in the brucia of Fabricius in the birds. Immature B cells proliferate and differentiate into mature B cells within the bone marrow after arising from lymphoid progenitor during hematopoiesis. The bone marrow contains a group of cells called stromal cells, which supports the growth and maturation of B cells. The stromal cells constitute the fat cells, the endothelial cells, the fibroblasts, and the microphages. B cells with self-reactive anti antibody receptors are eliminated within the bone marrow. Thymus. Thymus is the first organ to produce lymphocytes and sites for T cell development and maturation. It is a flat bilobe organ situated above the heart. The lobe of the thymus is separated by trabeculae into lobules. Its lobule has two compartments, the cortex and medulla. The outer cortex is densely packed with immature T cells called thymocytes, whereas the inner medulla is sparsely populated. The thymocytes are surrounded by epithelial cells, also called nerve cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells that influence the development of thymocytes. The thymocytes undergo thymic selection removal of T cells that express receptors for cell molecules during maturation. Therefore, most of the T cells produced in the thymus die here. Thymocytes mature to functional T cells in the cortex then migrate to the medulla where they encounter dendritic cells and microphages then pass into the peripheral blood circulation. Mature T cells expresses Either CD4 or CD8 molecules are transported to the secondary lymphoid organs. Before we move into the secondary lymphoid organs, I would like to discuss the lymphatic system. There are two circulatory systems in the body, the blood and the limb. As blood circulates under pressure, components of the blood leak through the thin wall of the capillaries into the surrounding tissues and are known as interstitial fluid. Most of the interstitial fluid returns into the blood through the capillary membranes. The remaining interstitial fluid called limb flow from the connective tissue into the lymphatic vessels where limb nodes are formed. The limb carries antigens from the tissue to the limb nodes where immune responses are initiated. Lymphocytes enter the lymphatic circulation 
directly from the blood to which they return via the tyrosic duct, the largest lymphatic vessels draining into the circulation close to the heart. Several afferent lymphatics brings the lymph to a particular node and a single afferent lymphatics vessel carry it away. Secondary lymphoid organs. The secondary lymphoid organs are those organs that can trap antigens from defined tissues and are the sites where mature lymphocytes encounter antigens eff effectively. The lymph nodes and spleen are the secondary lymphoid organs. Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are encapsulated bin sap structure packed with lymphocytes, microphages, and dendritic cells. Morphologically, a limb node can be divided into three concentric regions, the cortex, the paracortex, and the medulla. The cortex is the outermost layer packed with B lymphocytes, microphages, and follicular dendritic cells, and contains primary lymphoid follicles. After antigen activation, the primary follicles enlarge into secondary follicles with germinal centers packed with proliferating B lymphocytes and plasma cells, interspersed with microphages and dendritic cells. Germinal centers are a site of B cell activation and differentiation into plasma cells and memory cells just beneath the cortex. There is paracortex which contains T lymphocytes and some interdigitating dendritic cells. The antigens present in the paracortex are trapped by the dendritic cells which present the antigen fragments to T cells. Medulla is the innermost layer of a lymph node sparsely populated with antibody secreting plasma cells travel from the cortex via lymphatic vessels and has high concentration of antibody. The limb nodes efficiently trap antigens that enter via the afferent lymphatic vessel and empties the lymph into the subcapsular sinus through a single efferent lymphatic vessel. Limb nodes filter foreign antigens with the help of microphages T cells and B cells, which bring about immune response by generating antibodies and antigen specific T cells. Spleen. Spleen is the largest secondary lymphoid organ with ovoid structure situated high in the left abdominal cavity. The interior of the spleen is compartmentalized into structure separated by travaculae. The compartments are red puff and white puff. The red puff consists of the erythrocyte intermingled with many microphages and dendritic cells, few lymphocytes and plasma cells where old and defective red blood cells or RBCs are destroyed and removed. Whereas the white puff surrounds the splenic artery forming a periarticular lymphoid seed, also called PALS, rich in T lymphocytes. The marginal zone of PALS is populated with lymphocytes and microphages, which trap blood bone antigens and present it with class 2 MSC molecule to T helper cells. Then, the activated T helper cells further activate B cells Approximately 50% of B cells, 30 to 40% of T cells constitute the spleen cells. Tertiary lymphoid tissues. The tertiary lymphoid tissues are those tissues which normally possess fewer lymphoid cells than secondary lymphoid organs. This tissue play an important role during an immune response by undergoing a rapid and substantial increase of the lymphoid cells. Most prominent of these are various 
mucosa associated lymphoid tissue or MAL, cutaneous associated lymphoid tissue or CAL, and the intraepithelial lymphocytes or IEL. Mucosal associated lymphoid tissue or MAL. The mucous membranes lining the digestive, respiratory, and urinogenital system are prone to attack by pathogens. These linings are defended by a cluster of non encapsulated organized lymphoid tissues known as mucosal associated lymphoid tissues or also called MAL. There are several types of MAL, gut associated lymphoid tissue or GAL and bronchus associated lymphoid tissue or BAL are the two major types of MAL. GAL include the tonsil, the appendix and the various patches in the intestine. BAL is structurally similar to GAL and consists of large collections of lymphocytes. It is found primarily along the main bronchus in the lungs. Cutaneous associated lymphoid tissue or CAL. The skin is an important barrier to the external environment. The outer epidermal cells of the skin secretes a number of cytokines and induced to express class II MSC molecules to functions as antigen presenting cells or APCs. The interdigitating dendritic cell of the epidermis internalizes the antigen by phagocytosis or endocytosis and they function as potent activator of knife T helper cells by presenting antigens with class II MSC molecules. Intraepithelial lymphocytes or IELs. The outer mucosal epithelial layer contains intraepithelial lymphocytes. Many of these lymphocytes are T cells that express unusual receptors, gamma delta T cells receptors or gamma delta TCRs, which exhibit limited diversity for antigens. CD4 positive and CD8 Positive T-cells as well as microphages are also present in the dermal layer. Most of dermal T-cells were either previously activated cells or are memory cells. They are well situated to encounter antigens that enter through the intestinal epithelium. In conclusion, I would like to state this few sentences. Most of the immune response to specific antigens are precipitated in the lymphoid organs. The lymphoid organs are classified as primary, secondary, and tertiary. Lymph primary lymphoid organs include the thymus and the bone marrow. It provides sites for maturation of lymphocytes and become antigenetically committed cells. The lymphatic system of the body collects fluid that accumulate in the tissue and return to the fluid to the circulation via the left subclavian vein. It also delivers antigens to the lymph nodes. Lymph nodes trap antigens from lymph, whereas plain traps blood borne antigens. Tertiary lymphoid tissues, including mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, cutaneous associated lymphoid tissue, and intraepithelial lymphocytes interact with antigens that enter the body from the gastrointestinal, respiratory, and urinogenital tracts.